everybody. This is Tora, and I'm back with another episode of Outwise Insights, a podcast by freelance talent marketplace Outwise. Here we discuss trending topics with the business, technology, and the future of work. Today, I leave this episode in the trusted hands of Anna Kramarenko from Outwise, who will discuss the topic, understanding the freelance workforce, trends, implications, and strategies for success with guest speaker, John Younger. John is a respected writer and expert on the freelance economy. He authored Forbes' Freelance Revolution blog and the book Agile Talent. He also led the global survey on freelancing and is an expert in residence at Open Assembly. Thank you both for being here today. Thanks, Tora. I'm very happy to be speaking at this podcast. How are you, John? Hello. All good? All good. It's a pleasure to be with you today. It's our pleasure, too. You're speaking to us from the U.S. What time is it there? Uh, it's now 9.45 in the morning, and I guess it's, what, 3.45 in the afternoon for you? Yes, it's correct. Um, so <laughs> Yes. So we are, we are, um, we're still enjoying a very pleasant morning with uh, a little bit of clouds, but I think maybe sun later today. Great. Amazing. I mean, it's an early morning for you, and for us, it's like after lunch. So great. I, well, thanks a lot for being here with us. So sure. today we are speaking about the role and the importance of platforms helping freelancers to be successful. John, you are a guru in the field, and we know you try hard to help platforms innovate and early consultants embark on this journey. So could you please tell us a bit about what is the status of the freelance workforce right now and in which direction are we heading? Sure. Uh, you know, I've just finished writing a series of articles The only article that's un- incomplete right now is the the article on the forecast of freelancing in Spain. So mm-hmm. perhaps we can talk a little bit about that. And I know that that's something that's very important to you guys. Uh, what we're finding is that the world uh, is in a great state of economic and and uh, and financial uncertainty right now, industrial uncertainty. Are we going to have a, a worldwide recession? Are we going to have a bull market? Are we going to see more people losing their jobs or are we going to see another hiring boom? And I think that the, the answer right now for freelancing is that in times of uncertainty, people prefer not to make additional full-time hires. They're careful. They are reluctant to make decisions that indebt them in ways that they perhaps cannot afford or they can't see the future well enough. But they still need the work to be done. And so we are seeing a tremendous opportunity for freelancers, not only in Western Europe, but also around the world, because as companies choose to, to restrict their hiring until things become clearer, the work still re- continues, the projects need to be completed, and we are seeing great opportunities for freelancers in that case. Uh, what we also know is that more generally, it just makes more and more sense for the freelance revolution to grow. We know uh, in general terms, we have a couple of hundred million people that freelance part-time or Mm full-time. We know that the GDP generated by freelancers was somewhere around 2.5 or $3 trillion worldwide. Oh, wow. We know that it's a lot of money. We know that there are somewhere between eight or 900 freelance platforms and we're seeing a big growth in terms of what we might call freelance management systems to accommodate the direct hiring of freelancers by companies in uh, private talent clouds. So it's it's a real interesting time for freelancing. It's a real interesting time for freelancers. And it's a real interesting time for companies who see that they can meet some of their critical talent needs through the freelancing route. So pretty good stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's absolutely true. And I guess freelancers can bring more benefits and save much more money than, let's say, a full-time employee, right? You know, it's a very interesting thing. Sometimes there's a big cost advantage if if the idea is we only need this person for a week or two or three. But I want to I want to invite people to understand the difference in, in in what's happening as freelancing matures. And that is that you have the opportunity to identify and get the support of talent that is not available where you live, that is not available in your region, that is not available uh, near to you, 
but is available in other parts of the world. And what platforms provide is a way to discover the talent that you might not be aware of. So if we take the example right now of AI, if you take the example of right now robotics or machine learning or many of these other areas, you're not going to get a special deal. They're going to cost you as much as a full-time employee would be on an hourly basis, but you may not need as much time and that can save your money. But even more important, it's the idea that you can have access to talent that you couldn't ever have access to on a full-time basis because they wouldn't know your company or they wouldn't know that they wanted to work for your company on a full-time basis. But in fact, uh, as a freelancer, they are very interested in your project. So it's not just the savings of the money. It's also the access to talent that you could not find otherwise. Yeah, the talent goes global, basically. So you can access talent in any country, in any place, right? Exactly. And as long as that work can be done through the computer, and much, much, much work can be done through the computer these days, uh, it really gives you a tremendous opportunity to, uh, to seek broadly for that talent. Absolutely. Since we are seeing more freelancers nowadays, what will we do about it? What, how we will help them? Will we do anything to help them? Well, you know, it's a wonderful question. And, and let's, let's talk for a minute about what your platform, Outvise, does. Now, if, 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 we, if we wanted to give freelancers a perfect experience, a perfect experience, we would do five things. The first thing we would do is we would make sure to provide interesting work because we would be working very hard as a platform to identify and go after opportunities to bring work to our freelancers. The second thing that we would do is we would let people know through our communications that there's a continuing stream of interesting work. Not only do freelancers want work, but they want to know that it's worth investing in your platform. And so the continuing flow of interesting and attractive work that pays well becomes very important in their decision to decide whether to stay in your platform or another. The third thing that you would do if you were perfect is that you would provide them the support they need in their business management. You would help them to create a profile. You would help them to create a CV. You would help them to articulate the work that they've done before. You would help them to build a, the, the reputation that they need in order to go out and get additional work. You would help them in so many ways to do the things about business that they don't want, including collecting revenue, et cetera, et cetera. The fourth thing that you would do if it were a perfect experience would be you would provide them with the till with the tools and the skills and the experiences they need to grow in their area, to be future proofed, if I may put it that way, in terms of their skill set. And the fifth thing that you would do if it were perfect is you would create an active and engaged community that would provide support to them in a variety of It's very lonely out there. And so one of the things that becomes important is the chance to hang out with other colleagues who are doing interesting things, the chance to meet together, the chance to work together to identify project opportunities that may be larger than anyone can handle, etc. So those are the five things that you would do if you were giving a perfect experience to your freelancers. Now, we know that not everybody gives a perfect experience to their freelancers. But we do know that those are the five areas that are most important. I'll repeat them just so everybody knows. Provide attractive work. Demonstrate a flow of continuing attractive work. Help them with those business management tasks that they don't wish or don't know how to perform themselves. Everything from the CV and the profile to getting paid. You would help them to future-proof their skill set And finally, you would help them by building an engaged and active community, which will help them to continue to grow and develop as individuals, to attract more interesting work, and to continue to, to feel good about what they are doing. Those are the thrive things that you must do well. Absolutely. And especially the last one, I would say that, in my opinion, it's one of the most important features that a platform can offer, right? As a freelancer, you could probably find work yourself just creating a profile on LinkedIn 
by using a networking, people connections, but with a platform, you belong to a community, which makes you feel important, which makes you feel not alone, right? It's, you know, I like what you've said, and, and it's very interesting. There are different freelancers with different goals. So there are some freelancers that only want the work, and, uh, they, you know, that they, 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 they have their own reputation, they have their own, they have their own clients, they have joined the, the platform to, to, to capture additional opportunity, and that's really what they're looking for. There are some others that are saying, I just don't want to, I don't want to do the business management stuff. So I will leave it to a platform and I will pay a certain uh, cost of being part of the platform, a subscription or whatever, to, uh, to have that work done. But an awful lot of people, as you say, recognize that freelancing can be lonely. And so the opportunity to meet up with colleagues, the opportunity to work together with colleagues, the, re the opportunity to pitch for work together with colleagues becomes uh, something very important. But it's very, very important that we also recognize that there are different people within our platforms that have different expectations. And our job is to, to the best that we can, meet all of those expectations. Very true. Thank you, John. Let's sure. take a deeper look into more corporate perspective. So why should companies and clients include freelancers in their teams? And what can they do in order to work with them successful? You know. Just as we have five things that really matter for people in their experience of a platform, it turns out that there are six things that are important as they work with clients. The first thing is that the client ought to have a philosophy of when to use freelancers and when not to. So you can imagine some companies are very um, narrow in their view of using freelancers. And so they only need to use the, or they only want to use freelancers when it's absolutely necessary. Mostly what they trust are full-time employees and that's their choice. Uh, so one of the things that a, a company needs to do is it needs to be certain as a management team about when it will use freelancers and the role of freelancers in their company. Will it be big? Will it be small or something in between? Will it be in certain areas or it will be in many areas? Second thing, that a good company does in working with freelancers is it needs to do a very good job of onboarding. And part of onboarding is, is scoping, it's identifying the work, it's the SOW, it's being clear about the expectations, the deliverables, the timeframes, the milestones. And very importantly, it's, it, it, it is relying on feedback back and forth between the company or the project manager and the freelancer. It's very important that freelancers have the opportunity to be successful in their projects because that's the basis for them to get future work. So very important to be very clear, not only first step philosophically, what does the company believe in for freelancers, but second, what's the onboarding and what's the, the SOW that enables the person to feel as though they can do the work successfully. The third factor is train project managers to know how to work with freelancers. Not all of them do. Many, many project managers want to imagine freelancers to be like employees, but they're not like employees because they're volunteers, because they can choose to leave the project if they're not satisfied, which is very different than an employee. Fourth, very important, while the freelancer is working on a project to treat them as a member of the team and not as a as somebody in the gray zone, if I may put it that way. We know lots of stories about freelancers who are not invited into certain meetings, even though the meetings are critical for them to know what's going on. They're not invited to eat in certain cafeterias because the cafeterias are employees only. They wear a different badge, so they're almost treated like a different kind of citizen. That all makes people feel badly. You want the freelancer to feel like part of your team. You want them to act like part of your team not to be held back and treated like uh, an unclear citizen. Number five, there's some work that freelancers shouldn't be given because they don't have the relationships, because there may be conflict in terms of timeframes or schedules, or because uh, they may simply uh, not be allowed to certain look at certain things because they're company secrets. So let's be honest with them and say, this is certain areas that, 
you can't participate in, and they'll be okay with that as long as it's clear. And finally, treat them fairly, treat them with respect, and pay them well and on time. And if you do those six things, if you are clear about your philosophy, if you onboard them well, if you train managers, project managers to work well with freelancers as volunteers, as colleagues rather than as, as subordinates, if you treat them as a member of the team while they're working on your project, if you're, if you're clear about what they shouldn't be involved in because they can't be for whatever reason, and you give them the work that they can do, not work that they can't. And finally, if you treat them with respect and, and fairness and pay them on time, you will do a fabulous job and they will want to come back and work with you and you will have the expertise that you require at, from, from that relationship. I guess payment on time is not only the policy that should be applied to freelancing, it's basically a policy for all type of work, right? Yes. The difference is that very often, uh, if you are a freelancer or if you're a contractor, you are the last to get paid and, and, and the first uh, to be told that payment will come later. You know, I, a long time ago, I was, uh, I've been a freelancer for many years and I was doing a strategy project for a very large global company called Dow Chemical. Dow Chemical decided that it was having financial problems. So it made the decision that it was only going to pay people after 90 days uh, post invoice. That is to say, you sent them an invoice and they would pay you 90 days after they received the invoice. Well, since it took them 30 days to acknowledge the invoice, what they were really saying is that they would pay in 120 days. Now imagine that. That's incredible. Isn't that amazing that they were going to pay you after a third of the year because it was in their interest, not yours. I said I was leaving. I said I was going to stop doing the project because I didn't want to be their banker. They were asking me to lend them money effectively. Of course. Two days. And they said, well, why are you leaving? You can't leave. I mean, you're really important. And I said, but I'm, but I'm leaving because you are not treating me with respect. You are a multi-billion dollar company that wants to save money on my back. And that's not fair. It, it, you know, part of the problem is, is that the people in accounting that do payables, it, they're very nice people. I'm sure they're very kind people, but they're doing what they're told. And so it's very important that, uh, that as a company, you have a good standing policy, not only to treat your employees with respect, but to treat all of your workforce with respect. The easiest way to do that is pay them on time. Yeah, to start with, and also have proper policy to treat them, to integrate them, to make them feel part of the team, to make sure that, yeah, they do belong and they do what they are supposed to do. Right. All right. With this growing number of freelancers, naturally, many of them are new to the business. What are they experiencing? How can they survive the first years? Oh, I see. <laughs> you know, we collected some data on this, and it's really sort of interesting that there are, that, and, and let me, let me, just mentioned something, and that is, it, it, I wrote an article a couple, three weeks ago, I think. It was called uh, The Four Stages of Early Freelancing. And you may be reference, referencing that as we as we talk. Um, but I'm glad to talk about it a little bit and hope people will check out the Forbes article called The, the Four Stages of Early Freelancing or something like that. Hmm. Uh, and, and what we learned was exactly what you might expect, but the data is very clear. And that is, Year one, it's really hard for a new freelancer. What we know that what we know is that 60% more freelancers have joined freelancing in the last two years as a result globally, as a result of the combination of the pandemic, uh, the, uh, the, the income and the economic consequences of the pandemic, et cetera, et cetera. So whether it's because of the great resignation or the great awakening or people have decided to do something different or they've retired early or whatever it is, what we know is that there's 60% more freelancers now than there were a couple of years ago. And, and you can imagine how hard it is for those folks in the first year. It's a lot more freelancers, but the work didn't expand as fast as the freelancers. And so you've got 
more freelancers going after the same work or less work. And what it means is that for first year freelancers, it's been tough. Many of them have not been satisfied with the quality of their work. They've not been satisfied with their relationships. They've not been satisfied with the amount of money they've made. And they're wondering whether to continue to freelance. What we know at the end of the first year is that people make a choice. Some of them return to a full-time job, but of those people that decide to remain freelancers, the second year is much easier because they know how to do it. They've had the experience. They've gone through the, the hard times of the first year of difficulty. And so they've moved from, I don't know whether this is good for me, to a stage of, I, get, I guess I know how to do this. This is interesting. I'm sticking with it for a while. And that seems to be the case after the first year for the next couple. And then around year three, people have a different question. I know that I can do this. I know that I can make money and have a satisfactory career as a freelancer, but is that really what I wanna do? And over the next two years, what people experience is a lot of questions, a lot of thought. And some of them say, I'm going to continue freelancing. It's for me. And many of them say, no, it's not for me. I'm going to do any number of other things. Maybe they become a, a, an entrepreneur and build their own company. Maybe they become a full-time employee, but they continue to moonlight. Maybe they decide they're going to go into a new field, whatever that is. And, and at about the five-year mark, they've made that call. Some of them have said, I'm moving on, and some of them have said, I'm going to continue to freelance. For those people who say, I'm continuing to freelance at that five-year mark, they get excited again. They get enthusiastic again. They start to feel good about what they're doing because they've made the decision that for the time available, for whatever they consider that time frame is, they're going to keep freelancing. So four stages. Stage one is it's hard in year one, but people figure it out. Some leave, some continue. For those that continue, the next couple of years are satisfactory, positive, productive, they feel good, and then they hit a second wall in year three, which is, do I want to do this long term? And that takes a little time for them to figure out. Some of them leave, some of them stay. For those that say, they get excited again. And that seems to be the four stages. So one of the things that that means is that we've got to be smarter about the education that we provide these folks. Right now, all the education that we provide freelancers is about that first year, helping them to get started. But remember, we're experiencing a couple of other areas where they need a, a, a jolt of education, a jolt of decision-making, a jolt of what it is that they want to do. And so that becomes an important thing to provide them. I mean, in our case, yes, we try to engage with them. We try to do as much as we can. Uh, even this podcast is one of the channels. We try to engage with them. Um, we, tr we help them with their personal brand. We collaborate on content so they can, you know, use the article they write with us for their promotion. So we, tr we try this way, right? I think you're doing, I think you're starting to do some really great stuff. The, part of the problem is that it's harder in independent management consulting to do this in than it is in a more deeply technical area like either either software or hardware or or uh, finance and the reason for that is is that when people leave consulting and, and I'm pretty sure that almost all the folks that are in your business tech were at one time former consultants or former well many of them former consultants You know, it's a big change, Anna, to go from being a consultant in a big firm like a McKinsey and then moving to a platform. It's a it's a big change in a lot of dimensions. I mean, one of the changes is is just um, it's a it's a richer lifestyle when I'm in consulting in a big firm because they get to charge more. It's a, it's an easier life in some respects because you, you get to go on first class planes. You get to stay in four and five star hotels. You get to, you know, people are so excited to see you when you come in. It's not the same when you're a freelance independent management consultant. You're, you're more like a regular citizen than a celebrity, if I may put it that way. And so an awful lot of people find it frustrating because it's just not the same life that they had when they were at Deloitte or when they were at Bain or when they were at BCG. 
Uh, the, the other thing is they don't make as much money as they used to make in those worlds. So I think each platform has its own unique challenges. Each category of platform has its own unique challenges. In, in the case of independent management consultants, I think you guys are doing a fabulous job to help them with writing, to help them with speaking, to help them to be uh, sort of more public in the work that they're doing, because that's how they get the next job, right? So very nice work that you are doing. And the more that you can help them to stay up to date is very important. Absolutely. I can't agree more with what you say. And would you recommend anything else for platforms to help freelancers succeed on top of the five key points you mentioned earlier? You know, I, I, I think the most important thing that you can do is talk to them. There are three things that there are three things that freelancers that let me say it differently. There are three things that cause people to not be freelancers. Um, three hesitations, if I can call them that. This is data. I think this is Fiverr data, but it's pretty good data. And the data says that people worry about three things when they're thinking about freelancing. They worry about the, the, the up and down of their income, the volatility of their income. Their fear is that, uh, that they won't make the same amount of money or they won't do as well as they did. Um, second thing that they're worried about is losing benefits. And benefits are a big deal. So we can provide some of those benefits to people through our platform in a in a in a way that that gives them the access to some of the services and and and, and uh, some of the services that they can get as a full time employee. The, the 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 third is loneliness, and and you mentioned that in your in, in your discussion about an engaged and active community, which is that people are afraid that 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 they'll be working from home and basically stuck without a community that they used to have by going into work or, or working with a large company. So I think that if you can, as a platform, address those three, if you can find ways to help people get on a more even keel in terms of income, or just provide them with some of the factoring or, or income smoothing that they need so that it's not as volatile or jerky, if you can build the ecosystem relationships that allow you to provide more services to these guys and ladies, and if you can create an, a, a, a strong uh, platform experience, a strong community experience that makes them feel less lonely or more they have more access to colleagues. Boy, that's, that's a great combination of three things that makes a big difference. Amazing. Thank you. You know that I was a freelancer myself in the past for around six years. So yes, I did mm. hit the five years mark. But yeah, I, have, I understand 100% and I share um, your opinion on this factor that actually make you skip, you know, make you um, decide not to go freelance, right? Yep. All right. Well, John, this has been an excellent and very interesting discussion. Thank you so much for today. We, oh, it's my pleasure. It's my <laughs> pleasure. We really hope that more and more freelancers will succeed and the talent platforms will make as many efforts as needed to make it happen. Thanks for the great job you do. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to Outbuys Insights. If you want to hire top business tech talents or find your next project, head over to outbuys.com.